Thank you, Dan. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Bethlehem United Methodist Church and our Ash Wednesday imposition of ashes service. As you can read about in the back of your bulletin, Ash Wednesday is really about two things. It's about our mortality, it's about our frailty and our sin, and it's also about God's glory and God's love and God's light and God's desire and willingness to bring us into the light. You know, if you've, if you've been around Bethlehem very long at all, then you know we have some very gifted artists here who are part of our congregation. Some of their artwork is on display just outside the, in the narthex and down in the gathering space. And I'm not one of them, not one of those gifted artists that, that we have, but, but I did have aesthetic experience at Trevecca Nazarene College, and they tried to teach us a little bit about art. And one of the things I learned is that one of the things that makes artists like Leonardo da Vinci and Rembrandt great artists is their use of the contrast between light and darkness. Debbie, am I right? She's one of our gifted uh, artists. Rembrandt in particular knew that without showing and acknowledging the darkness and the shadows, we really couldn't see everything there is to see. And that's kind of a metaphor for this night as we bring the shadow places in our lives and as we bring our frailty and our mortality and our darkness before God, we celebrate God's desire and willingness to bring us into the light. So let's worship, let's worship God. I do you wanna tell you about a couple of opportunities that you can participate in as we make our way through um, the season of Lent. One is uh, a Bible study that uh, Reverend Kamar will begin next Thursday here at the church at 10 o'clock each Thursday, and that will be followed by a Zoom Bible study each Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. So uh, please contact uh, Reverend Kamar if you have any questions or are interested in, in, that, uh, in either of those classes. And then also during Lent, we're beginning a men's prayer group and, and uh, Bible study with breakfast this Friday, beginning this Friday at 6.30. Corky's cooking for us, so it's going to be good food, good fellowship, and, and uh, good experience together. So that we'll hope that you'll join us. Also, there's, there's other events uh, through Lent and leading up to Easter that you can read about in the bulletin. So take time to do that and let us worship God. Please stand if you are able and join me in the call to worship. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's, God's mercy, mercy endures yours forever. Let's remain standing as we sing together hymn number 269, Lord who threw out these 40 days. Oh, 
And on the screen. O oh God, maker of everything and, and judge, judge of, all of all that you have, you have made, made. From, from the, the dust, dust of the earth, earth you have yes. formed us, and from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts and put within us a new spirit that we may repent of our sins lead lives worthy of your calling through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us continue singing 382, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Our scripture lesson this evening comes from the book of Joel, chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. The rest of the verses, Pastor Craig will be incorporating during his meditation. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming, it is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes, their like has never been 
from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Felicia? Will you pray with me and for me? And now, Lord, sow the seed of thy word into our hearts and nurture it by thy grace that it might bring forth abundant fruit for the living of these days. Amen. Does anybody remember the first time you saw a Star Wars movie? Anybody remember that? I do remember. I was 17 years old. It was 1977, and it was the first Star Wars movie. I was with my mom and dad, my uncle, and his girlfriend at Hermitage 4 Cinema on Mount Juliet Road, almost into Mount Juliet. It blew my mind. It was unlike anything I had ever seen. I'll never forget those credits just rolling out into space. I just couldn't imagine, I still can't imagine how they can do that. And it was just such high adventure and so exciting, right? Luke was called out to fight against the evil empire. Now, I do have to admit that
say among the peoples, where is their God? So, there's an army about to attack Jerusalem, right? The, the, the mountains are black with their presence. And Joel says, I tell you what we ought to do, folks. Let's have us a good old-fashioned prayer meeting and do some fasting. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say that there may have been those living in Joel's own day and time who thought that his response there was a little weak, maybe a little inadequate. There's an army about to completely annihilate us, about to destroy us, and you want to have a prayer meeting. Well, I would also venture to say that there are those who would see what we're doing tonight as pretty inadequate, pretty irrelevant, and pretty unimportant. I mean, come on. Come on. When you look at the problems we're facing in this world, when you look at the problems we're facing in our hearts, our struggle just to live a full life, and you guys are gonna do what? Smear ashes on your forehead? It seems kind of funny, doesn't it? Seems like I can see how someone would see that's kind of odd. But we are here to acknowledge the reality of the situation. We are here to, re to acknowledge the problems that we face and that there's no lightsaber, there's no spaceship, there's no technology, there's no human wisdom, there's no army that's gonna rescue us that has all the answers. Like Joel in the eighth century, we're here to acknowledge and affirm that we need something else, that we need God. And that's why we're here. We're here to acknowledge the presence of the one who would bring us light. We're here to acknowledge that all the time, God is good, and God is good all the time, and God really is, good really is, greater than evil, greater than death, and greater than sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Today is Ash Wednesday, the first day of the season of Lent. So as we seek to strengthen our inner lives in preparation for Easter, let us also be people of invitation. As we discipline ourselves to observe a holy and meaningful Lent, may we also invite others to join us in a relationship with Jesus Christ as we now hear the ancient practice and traditional invitation to the observance of Lenten discipline. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the early Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During the season, converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. I invite you therefore, in the name of the church, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penance so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This time we invite you to come to one of the stations at the front to receive the imposition of the ashes. Please come.
time. Let's confess our sin before God. If you would turn with me to page 785 in the hymnal, let's read in the responsive reading of Psalm 51 as we confess our sin. 785. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned, and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was born into iniquity, and I have been sinful since my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in, in the inward being, therefore teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear with joy and gladness. Let the bones which you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from death, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you have no delight in sacrifice. Were I to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The, the sacrifice, sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, God. You will not despise. At this time, let's take a few moments as we offer our prayers of confession before God. May the almighty and merciful God, who desires not the death of a sinner, but that we turn from wickedness and live, accept our repentance and forgive our sins and restore us by the power of the Holy Spirit to newness of life. Amen. This time, let's join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, the glory forever. Amen. I invite us to stand now as you are able, as we respond to all that we've heard and experienced this evening by singing, Lord, I want to be a Christian.
remain standing. Please join me in the response of dismissal with blessing. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God. For he, For he is, is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and, and abounding in steadfast love, and, and relents from punishing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, go in peace to love and serve God and your neighbor. Go in peace.